Welcome, this is Rosemary coming to you from Ansara Angels. It's March 31st, 2013, and Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, today, we're just going to touch very quickly here on some things relating to Pope Francis regarding the fact of his three points that he made and the fact that there are three nails on the Jesuit logo and on his coat of arms. We touched on that a little bit in another video, but we want to go further into it and go into the origins of it a bit into some of what it means. And they're Kabbalistic in nature, as everything in the Bible is Kabbalistic in nature and is the Kabbalah told in parables. And for, for example, tarot cards are the Kabbalah told in pictures. The Bible is the Kabbalah told in parables. Okay, so we're going to approach it from that. And the Kabbalah has to do with the names of God and going from spirit into matter and uh, matter coming from the word of God or the word becoming flesh and the ten names of God uh, that are Hebrew, which one needs to do that. So here we have a picture of Kabbalah in a pictorial form. Obviously these aren't the names of God, but they, they're pictorial forms of the names of God. And this is just to give you a reference. This is not going to be a large Kabbalistic teaching because that's a lot of information. But we're just going to touch on this is where these things come from. The different arguments about how many nails did it take to nail Jesus to the cross. Was it two? Was it three? Was it four? Was it five? And all the different kinds of Christian denominations are all really at their core about how many nails it took to nail Jesus to the cross. Now what is that about? Why would that matter? That's because that has to do with these different, what they're called sephira, which means shells or containers, in these different points of this ten-pointed Kabbalah, the ten names of God. And the ones that refer to two refer to the Jehovah Witnesses, and the ones that refer to three and four refer to more Orthodox Christianity and Catholicism, that re which refers to five, refers to the more warlike, fundamentalist, the warlord of the Sephira of Gebura, which is war, which is, you know, the fundamentalist Protestant Christians, which want to use guns. And that's why, because they're in the Sephira of Gebura, and that has to do with the god of war, Mars, and that has to do with the name of God, which has to do with that. Again, this is... We're not going to go into Kabbalah here, it's too much, but, but understand these are points in the Kabbalah of how one alchemically goes from spirit to matter, from God to man. Okay. And the final, and then six point, of course, you have the Star of David. And ten points, you have Peter, the rock on which I will build my church. And you see Queen Elizabeth sitting there. Okay, so this is the royal bloodline. Okay. This is the coat of arms of Pope Francis I. And as you see on the Jesuit IHS, the, the Society of Jesus, with the cross there, you've got three nails below that. The three nails are their three point. The Society of Jesus is three point. Three nails to nail Jesus to the cross rather than four. So one through both feet and one in each palm. Okay. Now the grapes or the spike nard uh, that looks like grapes below there is associated with Saint Joseph, Jesus's stepfather. And the other side with the star, golden star, that refers to the queen of heaven, the woman in revelations clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet and the diadem of 12 stars upon her head, which the dragon seeks to devour. That's Mary for the Catholics. Everyone has their own interpretation, but that would be Mary, the Holy Virgin Mary, Jesus's mother, for this particular purpose. Here we got Joseph and Mary, his parents, his mother, his blood mother, and, and then we have the Society of Jesus, or we have Jesus and his brethren. We also have here a gold key and a silver key, and the gold key and the silver key refer to the two Pillars of Solomon, gold and silver, the solar and lunar aspects. We have the wisdom of King Solomon here. We have on the, the tufts on the right and left of the, the little red banners that stick out there with the gold tufts or, that stick out, those are fringes. Each of those adds up to seven. And in Hebrew, 
The number seven refers to the letter Zion, and that refers to a sword. So there's two swords there crossing, and then we have the the nails the, that you see there for the Jesuits under the I, H, S, and the cross. Nail in Hebrew is valve, and that is a V, and that is a six, 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 six. Now, interestingly enough, people want to point to the fact that the name Vicar of Christ that the Pope takes in Latin adds up to 666, and indeed it does. Interestingly enough, Pope Francis I does not want to be referred to, he said today on Easter, as the Pope or as His Holiness. He wants to be referred to as the Bishop of Rome, which alludes further to him being Peter the Roman. We'll get into that slightly more later. Uh, okay. Here, just an association that's interesting from some of these older Kabbalistic drawings. We, this is about alchemy. We see here symbols of the leopard, which is associated with Obama. We see a pope down here learning from the alchemist. We've got the grapes there in the spikenard relating to Joseph. And we've got some of the Kabbalistic symbols, abracadabra, coming from Abraham and that kind of thing. So just to point out, some of the associations are Kabbalistic. Okay, here we've got two-point Jehovah Witness, which is the Sephira of Chokhmah, which is just the Son and the Father. The Son is a reflection of the Father. Not the same as the Father, but a reflection of the Father. That's where you get the Jehovah Witness. It's because that's the first movement away from the One God to the Son of God. So you have two points. In the Kabbalah, that's called Chokhmah. Okay. Again, the Jesuits go into a three-point. It's Bana, and that is seen as a, a mother, a woman that reveals and conceals. You've got three points in the head here around Jesus, the Lamb of God. you got, you know, an, this is an, giving the impression that you have three nails or valve, valve, valve. Here, Jesus is seen as the beast. Okay. The body is the beast, by the way. So if we crucify his body, we get his spirit, right? That's true for all of us. Okay, we have here a Catholic interpretation of the crucifixion where we have the three nails. We also have the, the crown of thorns, which gives us a fourth head wound. We know head wounds are important in the book of Revelations and uh, the Antichrist receiving a head wound. And we have a Christian Orthodox, more Russian Orthodox, this is more alluding to four points. We have one in each hand and one in each foot. Some of them have a crown of thorns and some of them do not. The more stigmata you have, the more piercings you have, the more severe and militaristic the group. Okay, so here we've got a representation of Jehovah Witness with the two again. And on the other side, we've got a representation of five points. That's often associated with very strong fundamentalist Orthodox Christians or Protestant Christians, or if they're not Protestant Orthodox, where they're very militaristic and there's a lot of needing of the physical beast or body to be crucified. In other words, a lot of discipline and harshness to be able to bring in the kingdom. And that would be less mercy and more discipline. Because this is all about how much discipline and how much mercy does it take to make a religion that will bring the Messiah back. And how much mercy and how much discipline, how many on and off switches does it take to make a perfect human body that could be transhuman and become immortal. That's what's going on. Okay, we talked about earlier on the coat of arms of Pope Francis I, there being two tufts where it had fringes, and there were seven fringes on the right, seven on the left. In Hebrew, it stood for Zion, which is a sword. And we had two crossing, and here we have the crossing swords, which are associated with different things like pirates, skull and bones, and even some other representations we see in Islam. Okay, here we've got a picture of the mitre hat of the Pope that they always wear. That of course, it looks like a fish, and of course, it also looks like Christ said, I will make you fishers of men, and the fish symbol the Christians have on their cars. It's really a sine wave that really means time. Sin is nothing but time, being in time, and that's uh, a sine wave. But 
this is a symbol associated with the fish, but it's also a you know, dag on the fish god, but it's also associated with the two horns of the beast of the ram. Here we have two individuals, Pope Emeritus, but it's Benedict XVI and Pope Francis I, which could be seen as the two beasts of the land and the ocean, Pope Francis being Talmudic law, the beast that comes out of the land, or Sharia law, and the Pope Emeritus could be seen as maritime law, what has been in use, again associated with fish and the ocean, the beast comes out of the sea, could also be seen as the two horns of the beast. Okay. We want to pray for Pope Francis the first. I personally like him, so we want to pray for him because he's riding around without the shielding and we want to pray that he doesn't get injured. Okay, a lot of people are mad at him for washing the feet of people who are sick and kissing the feet of people who are sick, washing the feet of women and washing the feet of prisoners and kissing the feet of these people as well. He also kissed the feet of some Muslim women who were prisoners. He kissed their feet and washed their feet. And people are upset because they said Jesus didn't wash the feet of women. Women washed his feet and he only washed men's feet. You know, and this is obvious. So uh, we mentioned this in an earlier video that it was his respect for women that was going to get him in trouble and that's probably what's going to happen and make him the Antichrist or the false prophet or whatever you want to call him for doing that. So, you know, that's kind of obvious. And also his tolerance for other religions, his not wanting to be called Pope, his not wanting to be called His Holiness. And that's why they're leaving the other Pope there, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, because then people can kind of transition into the Pope being the head of the church. Again, we mentioned this in another video that this was going to happen, and it's obviously coming true. Okay, again, Pope Francis I, his name is associated with St. Francis of Assisi. His middle name was Di Pietro because St. Francis of Assisi, his father was Peter. So we've got the very Italian saint. And also Pope Francis I is Italian, although he was a cardinal in Argentina. A lot of people are wondering why there's a cross upside down on the back of the Pope's chair. At least it was like that in, in some of their chairs. They have a lot of different chairs they sit in. But there was a you know a lot of famous ones that Pope John Paul II, they showed him sitting in a chair with a upside down cross in the back of it and it being satanic. Well, turning things upside down can be called satanic. You know, you can turn anything upside down. But the point is... Peter was crucified upside down because he wasn't as good as Christ according to the scripture. So this is scriptural and the keys of the kingdom were given to Peter by Christ. Whatever you hold true on earth, I'll hold true in heaven. And he was crucified upside down. So that signifies St. Peter. It doesn't signify Satan. Another thing that's going to be brought to mind through Pope Francis I is the Knights Templar because the Jesuits and the Knights Templar are associated. Okay, thank you for watching. You stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date. You have a great Easter.